For sure. So my name is Miguel Sanchez. I am um, located in the Bronx, New York. Um, and like uh, Alex said, I, I came out to ARVR Innovate two years ago and I spoke about constantly going into meetings and telling people the future's coming, the future's coming, you need to hurry up and get on this ARVR thing and learn it before it's necessary. And now I believe <laughs> we're in that time where, where they're realizing I was right. Um, and right now I do a daily show at 11 a.m. called the Entrepreneur Hour, where I interview people about the current state of their business, what they're looking to do, um, and what, do, what help do they need and how they're taking advantage of technology. So I had Alex on a few days ago. It was a great one. You got to check that out. Um, I'll link somewhere. Uh, actually in here, you see this link? There will be this presentation. You can go to my website, download the presentation, and I'll have the link to our our interview there too. Uh, so Alex, are you still here? All right, so I'll keep going. So what I believe is happening right now is we are in a snapshot, a snapshot in history where we are getting to see a time where I thought we possibly would get to, but much further down the line um, because of automation. So I'll get into my whole thing. The first thing is, I have been, like I said, pitching AR for many, many years. And everything's going fine, Miguel. Sorry, just uh, I had, but everything's fine and we can see you full screen. Off you go. Sorry okay. for interrupting. No problem. So, even, even a project like this, I walked into the um, Bronx Zoo, the Wildlife Conser Conservatory Society, and I told them, look, you know, this is a cool way to show technology. I mean, show any information, it'll make it very memorable. So, within that meeting, they had forward thinking enough people to say, you know what, that is a really cool idea. Let us make these cards, let people download the app and they would trigger um, an experience that would remind them that elephants may be going extinct within the next 12 years, I believe, when I did this. And I didn't know that. And what they did was they started to send cards around the entire world into different um, zoos to, to let people download this app and see this and donate to their cause. So this was one experience where I went into and they, they understood and they um, they definitely moved on using the technology and it helped them. The second one, I was actually speaking at a conference very similar to this when a woman from Chanel walked up to me after the, the, the speech and said exactly what you've been saying. I've been saying, but I don't have enough um bullets in my holster to go into my board meetings and stuff like that and explain why we should be doing this can you come in and do this with me so i was like wow you know amazing i'm, I'm gonna walk into chanel and talk to their future talk to them, to them about the future of how things will be sold so what i did was i told them what i believe is going to happen eventually is people are not going to want to go to retail environments to learn about products they're going to want to be able to do it from wherever they are. And things like the Hololens and Magic Leap are going to allow that. So what we did was we created, they, they, have a, they had a watch called the um, Monsieur de Chanel. It was a men, it was a watch created for men. And Chanel is not normally known for that. So the technology Close. was super cool enough to, enough to make them want to do it and showcase it to potential buyers. But again, I went in and luckily I was able to convince them. That doesn't always happen. 98% of the time it doesn't happen. So more recent, we've been, we were approached by Facebook and um, now this and Lays to create a virtual world through the Facebook app. So one of the major hindrances to augmented reality, virtual reality is you need a device and you need software. So now with Facebook and these big brands starting to, and big technologies starting to embrace AR, VR, it's becoming much more ubiquitous. So what Lays wanted to do was highlight some of their content. I mean, uh, now this and Lays wanted to highlight some of their content. So they came to us to create a virtual um, lens in the Facebook Messenger. Oh, oh. So we created this experience using Spark AR. And, you know, while we're working on this, all right, so you scan the bag and it'll trigger 
a world. So each bag triggers a different world and then you can click the video and see more about this specific are the ones that show us new lenses through which we see the world. And I'm enriched by every opportunity that we have with our students. So, you know, a few months ago, we were trucking along, working on different things, talking to different companies about different projects. And the, the conversations will always go into what I believe the future of technology would be, AI, AR, VR, MR. And, you know, most people think in when they, when they think about the, um, the impending doom of automation, they think this, you know, the, the physical robots are going to come and kill us all. But I always was thinking automation is just going to remove jobs from the, the world. And then what happens to all the people that didn't that, that didn't have the skill sets in this new world of innovation? And these jobs are innovative jobs and they're not the normal past jobs of, of repetitive, the repetitive nature. So as I have these conversations, have these conversations, I would always explain that I believe people are going to be home one day with nothing to do. And we're going to need to have things for them to do. But it would, it would most of the time fall on deaf ears. I remember uh, finding this, this, um, this quote or something about this goddess named Cassandra. Her power was she could see the future, but she couldn't convince anybody of her of her of her knowledge of the future. So things wouldn't change. So she was doomed to see the future, but not be able to do anything about it. And what I believe is happening right now is we're all being put in a time capsule to see the future possibly and do something about it. So I believe people like us who probably are in this conference that are very like me talking about the future, we are all now, ha we have our, our time slot to say, hey, remember when that pandemic hit and we were in a time where we were months at home with nothing to do, uh, no way, uh, most people not a way to make money. Um, what are we gonna do if that happens again? And if it happens again for natural reasons or for automation reasons? Then hits, COVID-19, right? So we're here. We're here now. We're sitting in our homes, some of us longer than others. I'm in New York City. I've been home for 50 days. Today's the 50th day in a row that I have been home. No, 49. No, 50th. Um, and I remember as I'm on social media, posting memes all day, I and of course working and doing multiple shows, I came across this meme. Digital transformation is years away. I don't see our company having to change anytime soon. And the wrecking ball of COVID-19 about to wreck that company's ideas. And that's how I used to feel. I would go in these meetings and people would talk exactly like that. And now this COVID is giving me and people like you who are watching the opportunity to not have to sell the future. We're here right now. So what do I believe is going to happen? What do I think is already happening? The world has changed forever. It, are you ready for it or not? You know, and are you preparing your companies and your clients for it? That's where we have a huge opportunity as people that even understand what this space is. They, you know, we understand what AR VR can possibly bring to the world. Most of these brands don't have any clue. So now we have our time. We have our, our, our spotlight. So I believe augmented reality and virtual reality will create the future opportunities, the future solutions to what is happening right now. Why is that? Think about things like social distancing. We can't be close to each other. We can't touch things. We can't go anywhere, right? So in a world where we have no idea how long a vaccine is going to take to be created, but also we know we can't stay home for two years while a vaccine is created. We are going to have to go out into this world and figure out how to operate, how to buy, how to shop, how to work, how to be educated, how to be entertained in a world where we have to be far away from people, not being able to touch things and be close to, to environments. 
one of the biggest opportunities I already see is cashless environment, right? Like they're already talking about, you, you know, cash can have a virus on it and you're passing this virus around. So what, what opportunities will that bring for AR? I believe huge ones and I'll show you some examples of that in a few slides. We're also home. We're all stuck home, you know, wishing we can be other places. But what can we do at home to actually be in other places? You know, that's where VR becomes a huge opportunity. So I'm going to start talking about sectors and how each sector can be really revolutionized by AR VR right now. Let's start here. This is probably what we would have been sitting at and what where I would be normally right now in a pre-COVID world, but I'm not, I'm home. This is the current innovation of how we're doing this, but there is a better way that is coming along that, and I'm not sure if anybody has seen this video, but this is how I see it going in the future. And, I, and the people are already working on it, but after this situation where all conferences had to scramble to figure out how to do this remotely, you know for a fact that's a huge industry. They're going to be figuring out how to not be in this situation ever again. And I believe this one, this situation, this example is going to be a major way it happens. Now, it's a pleasure to be here in Las Vegas to present to you. Now, I get invited to do keynotes across the globe. And while it's easy for me to be here in Las Vegas, it isn't always easy for me to travel across the world. And even when I do, I can't always speak the local language. Well, what if neither language nor distance mattered for me to deliver a fantastic keynote? What if technology could help me be anywhere I needed to be and speak any language I wanted? Well, it can. We are bringing together the power of mixed reality and Azure AI services to create a truly game-changing experience. What you're about to see is an exact hologram of me wearing the same outfit that we recently captured at a mixed reality studio. And I don't speak Japanese, but what if I wanted to deliver my keynote in Japanese? Using Azure AI technology, I can translate my English into Japanese and train it to sound exactly like me, the same voice tones, those same inflections. Now we've brought this together, my hologram and Azure AI, to show you what's possible. So first, I'm going to put on my HoloLens 2 here, and then we'll flip in the room to the special camera so you can see exactly. So I'll fast forward to where she creates. <laughs> So if you see, imagine we had a conference that way, where right now you were seeing me virtually, you could look around me, you can see my mannerisms, you can also see my presentation. Of course, that's where it's going. And now I believe these conferences have a much bigger interest of making that happen now because of COVID, right? Imagine now going to your sponsor and saying, this conference is not going away. People with glasses, which hopefully become a lot more and more, of course, it's enterprise right now. And maybe your conference is enterprise, you know, level anyway. So now you have people who can watch your conference and watch your speakers and interact with them in a way like this. Um, I'm really looking forward to doing keynotes like this in the future. Um, and, you know, this is a, just the first start of how we go virtual with conferences. So and then in the learning and education, also, we're talking about training, right? Training. Right now, I have three young sons who are learning for the first time virtually. Right. So they are being thrown in an environment that they've never been in. But I've always thought that education and learning something because of the way we've learned for the for our entire history from the caveman days by doing. I always believe the augmented virtual reality experiences where you can literally look 
like you are learning this thing in the real world would help immensely. And now we're in an environment where you have to do that. On the show on Monday, Alex was talking about um, oil rigs, sending people with hollow lenses into the oil rigs. So if anything happens, they give the hollow lens to a person that knows what to do. And that hollow lens shows to the person on the rig what to actually do in real time on the actual equipment that they need to learn and do, but they may not have been trained on. But now through remote, that can be done and that can save that company millions of dollars a year. So companies now are going to be way more incentivized knowing what we've just dealt with and what we haven't been out of yet. We have to figure out solutions that allow people to remotely learn, work and create. The medical field right now, hospitals are being just decimated. And the, the truth of the matter is it's not every town or never every city or every country that's being decimated at each time, but we are limited to the bodies that can be in a hospital in that environment. So in New York city, we just went through and we're still going through a huge, um, growth in cases of, of COVID and our hospitals were being overwhelmed last week. I don't know if that's still the case today, but what if we can tap into doctors in other countries to help patients, maybe in countries where their numbers are not so, so high, right? So I happen to know many AR, VR solutions being created right now for this, this time. The, the problem was it was very hard for them to get funding because Again, people couldn't see the future that we're living in now. So I really truly believe these people that are creating these solutions, now is their best time ever to go speak to investors, speak to, to funders, uh, speak to partners and get this done because right now we need this technology. And while we're all sitting at home, sitting at home, figuring out what to do, uh, most people are Netflix, uh, Netflixing and, and binge watching things going on the internet. But I, I think, you know, entertainers have also been hit, right? So imagine they just said they're canceling all concerts until 2021. So I'm not sure, you know, every entertainer is not filthy rich thing. They can last, you know, until then without making any money. And I saw something that I felt like was ingenious the other day and it happened because my sons told me about it. I had no clue, but my sons told me about this concert that was happening inside of the game that they play all day, every day, Fortnite. And I was like, I, I didn't understand what they meant. So even, even me being a forward thinking technologist, I didn't really understand what they were talking about. So I watched, this and so did 12 million other people during a pandemic. I mean, this, this concert was amazing. I highly suggest everyone go check it out because the Fortnite people, they are for, they're forward thinking as well. They are working on something called the metaverse where just like this content looks right now, you will be able to, with VR glasses, be in a location like this and watch this concert, right? So what I, what I took away from that experience was I was literally sitting with my three sons watching a concert during a pandemic with 12 million other people. And we were rocking, we were laughing, we were joking, we were entertained. That artist made supposedly $2 million 
for that concert. This is the future of how people will be entertained. Of course, there still will be locations to go to, but maybe not everybody has the, can afford to go. But if let's for instance say they charge a dollar per person that was outside of the conference, I mean outside of the the con, um, concert, this would have made twelve million dollars for a dollar per concert. Let's say we make it ten dollars. Now we're talking numbers that are ridiculous, and that's not even counting the number of people at the actual concert, right? So the ideas behind entertaining in this post-COVID world, I believe, are humongous. And right now, again, we're all in this snapshot. We can figure out what to do in this next phase of humanity, which we, we won't go back to. Everybody, this is our first time most people dealing with something like this, unless you were around for the Spanish flu, which would make you probably not be watching this video. But what happens is now that we have lived through this, hopefully we all get through this while we're in it, we can be sitting in our, in our own thoughts and figuring out what could we do? What could we do for the next version of reality? One of the biggest things that's happening right now is we're talking about how to reopen how to get the economy back working. I mean, the economy back going, people working, people going outside. Of course, it's way too early in most places, but people can't be this long without making money and without um, going outside. So of course we see huge opportunity in retail. We, we've always seen this with AR. We've always seen it with AR, VR. So here's some examples. Right now, we know we can't touch. We can't, we probably can't use cash. So what if through your phone right now, you can be scanning, you can be going, of course, social distancing, right? Like when you go to a store now, they only let a few people at a time. It's a long line. But what if when you go inside, you don't have to touch things. You can scan, look, pay right there through your phone. And of course, someone comes or you just bag your stuff up and go. Right. I do believe this may be a way to stop a lot of a transfer of a virus like COVID because of the touching and the, the, the um, social distance, distancing aspect. Not only will people be able to do this at the place, they can even do it outside of the place in VR. Right. You can go into a store. This is a company I have a friend who worked at and they worked on this. It's called Obsess. They've worked on a way to virtually go into retail and select things and buy things. Also, as we've known for day one with AR, AR can allow us to shop even while we're at our home and place things in the environment that we live in to see if th things fit, they'll match with our current, you know, decorations and stuff like that. So AR has always been able to do this, but now, I can see more people wanting to do this instead of going out and shopping, right? So now that puts the pressure on every brand, every website to be able to have AR and VR options because in a, in a post COVID world where this could happen again, or we don't know how long this will last, you need to be able to show your clients, your potential customers, how they can buy from you without risking their lives. Travel, of course, this is a huge situation. We are all stuck home. We would love to be traveling, right? But we can't. But it would be a way of entertaining, of being able to travel where you put on the HoloLens and you can put yourself in Paris, in, in Italy, and you're literally feeling like you're walking around those locations because the HoloLens allows you to move in the environment and it's awesome experience. But what happens when we can go back outside and all the world is now digital and, and Facebook just bought this company called Scape with, because they plan on creating an environment where AR and VR is ubiquitous and you can put on glasses and go anywhere and do anything you want. Of course, that makes sense, you know, within a digital space, but then you can also interact with what you want, what you need to do. And what this will look like is you put on glasses and now you get this digital layer over the world that will allow you to understand more about the environment. So maybe you can make better choices about where to go and what to do and put yourself in maybe less of a risk of contracting a disease like this. 
once the disease is over, we will all benefit immensely from having technology like this to be able to move around the world and travel. But then I think about the old people that may need to stay home for longer than some of the younger because of COVID's very um, uh, aggressive nature to, to old, the older population. So what if we can give our loved ones virtual glasses and put them on a beach, put them in Italy, put them in France or wherever they want to go? I highly suggest right now, if you have the extra, the extra dollars, for everyone to go out and get an Oculus Go. An Oculus Go is, is pretty much what we're talking about right now. This device, I think, costs less than 500 bucks. You put it on your, 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 your head and you literally download apps that can do things like put you anywhere in the world. Um, I do believe that right now AR has, I mean, VR has one of the hugest opportunities because there's devices like this that are low cost, not super low, but not that expensive. This device to do what, what's possible with this device five years ago was, would have cost you $3,500 easily. Now, because the way technology moves, everything gets better and cheaper every year. We are now in a time where luckily this technology is available to us in this pandemic. In the next five years, 10 years, this stuff is gonna get way, way more advanced. One thing everybody thinks is about to happen is Apple is about to drop their AR glasses. And I believe this is when AR will take its biggest jump, right? What, what happened is once we can go back out into this world, if we have glasses like this that will help us to manage the information that we move around the world in, meaning knowing where to go, knowing what to do, being able to pay without having to touch money, being able to travel, translate um, different languages, being able to learn, being able to be helped medically, like all the examples I've been talking about, I believe this, this will be the, the, the big moment in AR once Apple releases their glasses. Because right now, like traditionally with most technologies, everything starts out at enterprise because enterprise can pay for the development, the research and development, the projects, right? So for instance, when I would go into agencies and brands, I was coming in through the marketing lens, but agencies and brands have their marketing budgets allocated. So they don't really have a lot of money to research and develop, but corporations do on an enterprise level, a corporation can build a product because they know the future will need it. So that's where I believe all these companies are right this second. They realize, oh my God, we weren't prepared for this, for this situation, this type of situation where people are stuck at home and they can't work on what we need them to work. Then I believe we will get to the point where we are now in the consumer level of ARVR. And once that happens, that's when I believe the, the technology would take off and everybody will be trying to create for it. But I believe we should be creating for it right now. And that's where, where I believe people need to see stuff like this, understand what's out there, research what's going on, look for solutions to problems they are facing, and then figure out how an, a technology like AR, VR can help that and just start dipping your toe in that water. It's going to take a while. AR, VR is not here right this second. VR has a huge opportunity. AR is a little bit of a, of a further away thing. But I believe because of COVID, it will be pushed much farther along, much faster because we have lived through a time like this. So that's where I'm looking forward to what happens right after this and going back in to all the brands and saying, I told you so. Now, what, what are we going to do? Let's do something about the next time this happens and go from there. Well done, Miguel. I think um, 
I think that hologram example just blew us all away. It was really <laughs> interesting. I think some uh, people who've been involved in this sector for a while would be familiar with the hollow portations, uh, the hollow portation video from uh, Microsoft a few years ago, which was really amazing too. But I, I think it's interesting to see how it's evolved. And um, a shout out to one of our uh, exhibitors, Volograms, who have participated the last couple of years in the conference. Uh, here in Ireland, uh, we have world leaders in this space, actually. They're a spin out from, um, from Trinity College here in Dublin. So if anyone's watching and interested in holograms, volograms. Um, if you're an academic and think, wouldn't it be cool if someone could give my lecture for me <laughs> in Spanish and Italian? And if I could monetize my amazing lectures across uh, 10 different languages, uh, you've given us all ideas. So um, just really good. Yeah, I've been seeing lots of really nice uh, compliments coming in there, Miguel. Uh, we'll try and get to a couple of questions as well. Um, we were due to finish in about 10 minutes, but I think we can roll on a little bit longer. Um, I think there's a bit of interest and um, I think, yeah, we have time because the next session isn't until half past one anyway, which is uh, well worth staying on for guys, not Neil O'Driscoll from uh, Vstream. Um, yeah, uh, here's a couple of questions. Just uh, bear with me, everybody, as I scroll down. I know um, there was a question from Kathleen Hughes. Uh, Kathleen's in TU Dublin um, about... Um, and it's a bit like a piece of straight string to an ex to an extent, but how long she was specifically talking about retail, how long would it take to get a project off the ground? And have you any idea of the costs? I, I suppose it depends on what you want to achieve. I know Johnny Cosgrove, uh, who'll be with us later in the day, makes the point, I think he's right, that, uh, you know, you can, you can simply do some VR, inverted commas VR with 360 cameras, obviously. But uh, what, what are you seeing in the States in terms of, is there an appetite to spend a lot more if you worked on those type of projects yourself? So I've been in many, many pitches on, a, on VR, right? VR is much more, it was much more of the hot thing, you know, like a year ago. But the, the budgets weren't really there because the lack of understanding. What happens a lot of times with these new technologies is people want what, what they want, but they don't understand the cost of what they want, right? So like with VR, literally anything's possible. So people are coming up with these huge ideas and it's like, yeah, sure, we can do that for a million dollars. But it's like, oh, we had, we had 40 grand, you know? <laughs> it's like, so what we see now is the budgets are growing and growing because more usage is happening. And also what I do see is the press behind doing something good like this. Like for instance, the Travis Scott thing, right? That thing got so much press that it makes it much more valuable to the brands and the agencies to just do it because they know they'll get the press. They may not get the, vis the views on that actual product because there's not enough VR sets being used but the press that they did it is more than enough to get them their money back. But at, certain, at a certain point, that dollar value has to be calculated and they figure out, okay, we can only spend this. But I do yeah. believe now where we, at, where we are with everybody probably looking for an entertainment that goes outside of our environment, VR has a huge opportunity to grow in its numbers. So yeah, I, I, you, you give a great example, um, which I'm a big fan of uh, because my own background uh, academically and in industry around travel and tourism. I know I've been you know banging the drum for years that VR is a really a cool thing for tourism. And I actually noticed even in the last two weeks, an explosion is not too strong a term in terms of travel companies putting online 360 videos, creating microsites to sort of share with people. Pity you can't be with us today, but here's a 360 view of, of our castle or our parkland or whatever. So we're, we're you know, all of a sudden, there's been a massive impetus because of COVID. People, these tourism destinations know they ain't going to get the tourists this year at all, yeah. but they still need to connect with them. Exactly. You need, everybody's fighting for that first time out. Where do I go? Right? Like, like what, what, what is the destination that I, once I can get out of the, out of the house, where do I go? So right now having situations where you can educate people and make them want to, to travel to your destination is a huge opportunity. The, that the money, to do it may be tough, right? Because right now you're going through one of the worst times of your, your business, but I do believe it's a mistake not to be thinking this way, right? Because, yep. yeah. Yeah, now I'm just, uh, cause we've quite a few questions, just wanna catch up catch up with a couple of those uh, from uh, Vipab Gar, apologies Vipab, I'm not sure where you are and I'm, I'm surely mispronouncing your name, so my apologies. <laughs> um, yeah, he's a question in terms of how do you see the challenge of accessibility of VR headsets for the end consumers? Will VR headsets be seen in people's home just like we have mobile phones? I mean, obviously 
us in the industry, inverted commas, we're highly enthusiastic. We've lots of headsets lying around. Some of them we don't use anymore because they're old hat, for want of a better term. But in reality, the penetration of these headsets is still very low among consumers. I do believe that's that's where if I was Oculus Go right now, I would be spending all of my advertising budget for the next two years right now. Because mm -hmm. everyone is sitting home and if they knew there was a device that could literally make them feel like they weren't at home and it didn't cost a million dollars, right? Like they would probably buy it if they could afford it, right? So right now is a huge opportunity to grow those numbers. Even me, for instance, I have a HoloLens, I've had VR glass, I had the, the Gear VR, but my gear, my stuff is a little old because I, I'm not in VR every day. I only really use it for work, right? So it's not my main entertainment thing. But even right now I'm thinking, I should get the latest version of the, the Oculus Go not only for me, for my kids, you know, my kids. Yeah, well, I, I, sorry for cutting across you. I think uh, one of the challenges, and it is a sign of the times, is that there's massive backlogs anyway on delivery on all of those. I think I was reading recently, just in the last few days, that Zuckerberg said that uh, Quest in particular, which is their their headset, that's a step up. And I'm conscious in the audience watching, some people are very familiar with what we're talking about, some may be new to it, but Quest is a slightly more expensive headset. It's around 500 euros, whatever, dollars, more or less the same, which allows what's called six degrees of freedom. So you can you can move around, it's just a more immersive experience. But he's already on record in the last few days of saying it's just far exceeded their expectations. So I think there's an appetite from Facebook to invest more, uh, and clearly COVID is, is part of that. Quick uh, recommendation, if I may, for people, because I, uh, I, I, um, I have um, uh, some elderly relatives, obviously. There's a fantastic app in Quest. I'm not sure if it's elsewhere, but it's called Wander, uh, and it allows you to put on a headset, you download the app, and you can basically transport, teleport yourself using the Google Street View. There's a world, a world map appears, and you can basically do a random uh, arrival wherever you are, and you're in a street in Bogota or whatever. But you can also put your favorite. So you can, for example, if you were visiting a relative, hopefully we'll be able to soon, you can actually select where they're from, or they're the street they were grew up in, or where they played football, and show them that in a virtual reality. So I know we have a couple of speakers later today. There's a lot of empirical evidence as well around this that uh, nostalgia is big now in the time of covid and uh, it works as a form of uh, a part, partly a form of therapy which i think is interesting um i'm just uh, just conscious and thanks everybody for all the questions um how can a traditional grocery store adapt to this new vision of ar and vr There's a lot of interest in retail here so i i see that as you know even right now one of the what they're saying right now one of the biggest ways to transfer the virus is in grocery stores and and, and um you know supermarkets because everybody has to go there one of the things i see is again making it cashless you know you, you may have seen that example with um amazon where where they took um whole foods and then you can you can shop you don't pay anything you just grab the things walk out and it knows how much you you need you spent I think we're a little far away from the average place being able to do that. But if there was a way to, with your phone, to just look over things and say, all right, I want to buy these strawberries, press OK, press, press, and then I buy and I don't pay cash, it all goes to, and I just take them and go. That's a, that's a huge opportunity I can see, but of course, infrastructure needs to be created, um, connection to, to the database of barcodes, all this stuff. But I do believe there's going to be much more people thinking about stuff like this now and much more brands and governments willing to help that along yeah um i have a couple of my own questions in terms of um you're, you're dealing with a lot of agencies uh, you're an agency yourself but you're also um it's just from a marketing perspective how do you see this playing out do you think do you think we'll see a growth in immersive only agencies or do you think that what's likely to happen is that current uh, either traditional inverted commas agencies or digital agencies are going to gobble up the small immersive guys how do you see this playing out so the way it's traditionally have always gone, right? At the beginning, agencies look for external vendors, right? Till they get to a point where they believe it's enough work that they're going to have where they in-house most of it, right? It's happened over and over. I've seen it in my career many times. I don't think we're there yet where the agencies are going to. And I do believe that the reason why I created my agency to do mostly this is because I do believe the skill sets involved to do it are a little bit too high of um, a level to just have sitting in an agency all the time waiting for a project. There's not enough projects yet to have agencies sitting around with technology guys like this. But I have seen some agencies do it. I have seen some agencies do it and it's starting to change the way I do business. 
I'm, I'm, I'm more of a consultant that helps those teams instead of them hiring my exact team to do it. Right. So yeah. that's how I've been moving around that world. I mean, what are the criticisms from the marketing community? And, you know, when I first set up the conference in 2014, it was actually called AR Marketing Conference because I'm a marketing lecturer. I've, my background is marketing. I was convinced that AR was going to explode in the world of, of marketing. Now, that proved not to be the case. And, uh, you know, uh, one, one of the problems is there's a bit of disillusionment. But I suppose the term that most commonly got thrown back to people was that it's gimmicky. You know, that it's just, you know, a ballerina dancing on a can of soft drink, which is a, a fleeting wow moment, but beyond that. So do you think that today, in terms of how the conversations that um, brands are having with agencies like yourself, there's, a, there's an understanding that uh, the immersive solution, it can't be a, a technology in, in search of a solution. It has to integrate with the, the broader strategic uh, objectives. Yeah, the, the gimmick conversation has been being had for about, eight years now. In the first few years, it was just okay to have the gimmick, right? And then it really became, okay, how does this benefit the consumer or educate or whatever? So we've been in that stage for a while, but still we've been in it because we know AR, we've been in AR for a long time, but people coming to it now, they're thinking like we thought 10 years ago. So they're still creating gimmick stuff. So that's what you're going to see mostly until these agencies and brands start to really fully understand what's possible. And I do believe this COVID situation starts to put that into context. Okay, wait, we can solve problems. We can create solutions to, to situations where that we're dealing with using these technologies. Okay, now let me look at this more in depth. That's what I think is gonna happen. Haven't had the conversations just yet, but I'm sure they're coming. 